Hi there, welcome to another video of mine. My name is Paul Moreira and today we shall have a look at a very well-known camera, the Nikon FM. There is plenty of information in the internet about this camera, but I decided all the same to make a video because it's part of my camera collection. As usual, let's start by putting the Nikon FM into an historical context. It was born in 1977, so at the end of the 70s, and this camera was meant to replace another camera and camera lineup at the same time. So the Nikon FM came to replace the Nikomat FT3, and why not say the Nikomat Lion, because Nikomats are most famous because of their mechanical versions, the FTs. And so the FT3 was the last um, Nikomat, and the Nikon FM came to replace this. They, it, this is a bit, uh, <laughs> it's a bit curious that this camera was also launched in 1977, and uh, so it lasted only for a few months. I suspect that this camera wasn't ready, and so they, um, it had a very short run. Doesn't mean that they're scarce or rare, but uh, it lasted for a, a few months only and before being replaced with the Nikon FM. Now, the FT3 is an interesting camera and we can compare both the successor and the Nikon Mat. The Nikon Mat is much larger, it's a larger and possibly heavier camera, but they are both quite heavy. But in terms of specs, they are exactly the same. They both feature a vertical metal, metal vertical run shutter from which speeds from one second to one thousandth of a second in both cameras, so they are quite the same. They are all mechanical, like uh, I'm always saying. They don't need batteries to operate. This one has a multiple exposure facility. This one doesn't, but has mirror lockup. They're built like tanks. This one is built like a tank, although at the time Nikon didn't think the, these cameras were worth carrying the Nikon name. Anyway, they do have the Nikon name at the back. The FT3 also inaugurated for the first time in a body, not in a Nikon, but in a body, uh, Nikon body, um, the AI um, lenses system the auto index lens system that we shall have a look in a while so the Nikon FM at the same time had to replace the Nikomat line because the sole remaining Nikomat would be the EL2 which got a name change to Nikon finally they convinced themselves that uh, the cameras were good enough or because the FE uh, was even later, <laughs> in, in a later stage of development, and so it took more time to come to the market, I don't know. But the Nikon FM then had this huge responsibility of being Nikon's new expert semi-pro camera. It, in terms of specs, you can think, oh, but these specs are rather simple, they are exactly like the Nikon Mat. Of course they are, because um, Nikon would never release a semi-pro or an expert inverted commas camera uh, that would be have more specifications than the Nikon F2. So this was deliberate. Anyway, let me just show you uh, some cameras that the Nikon can compare to this Nikon and possibly this Nikon FM had to battle in the market. One obvious is the, the Olympus OM-1. Obviously, I don't have them all. I just have the two of them here from my collection. And you see that the um, Olympus OM-1 is, OM is a little bit smaller. It's also quite lighter. It's lighter. So it has a light or a lighter build, I think. I suspect, anyway. I don't mean it's not reliable, it's not that. It has a, uh, it's a different type of, of build. But I think the camera that gave Nikon uh, a run for the money 
was the Pentax K1000. It's a huge camera, even compared with the Nikon. Nikon is compact for a Nikon, but compared to the Pentax, it is almost petite, like a dwarf. So this was nothing more than a Spotmatic with a K-mount. Uh, the mechanics of the camera were more than trial and, and, and improved, so it was ultra reliable. Pros used it, semi-pros, amateurs, uh, photography schools, everybody. So it was a huge success around the world. And so it, it took part of the uh, all mechanical high quality cameras uh, market. The Nikon was also very successful because it has a legendary reputation also of being ultra reliable. But of course it cost more and, and so uh, I don't think it sold so well. Uh, this model has the uh, Pentax K1000. Anyway, we must make justice to uh, the Nikon FM because this chassis, a bit like the Spotmatic, this chassis gave birth to uh, a series of remarkable cameras. So um, there were many models that came out of this frame or chassis or body that history will always remember. One of them is the Nikon FM2, of course, the first camera in the world to have a mechanical shutter going up to one four thousandth of a second. Uh, really a piece of a magnificent piece of engineering and a camera that also has an outstanding reputation. Next, the FA, the first camera in the world to have matrix system. And uh, to end, the Nikon FM3A, the only one uh, that I know that has two shutters, one completely electronic, one completely mechanical and independent one from each other. Counting more or less all the models, I think this chassis was in production for 30 years. So it was in 2007 that Nikon discontinued the F3A. This camera was launched in 1977, so you see 30 years that um, this chassis, with modifications of course, was in production. Quite an achievement. So you see this little camera um, that is discreet, elegant, um, held uh, in its genes some uh, of the most famous cameras uh, that we know in the history of photography. Now, let's, enough of this historical bit, let's look at the Nikon FM and see what it has got to offer. Now, if you are a fan of gadgets and stuff like that, this is not for you. This is a, a tool. If you don't know how to use a tool, then this camera is not for you. If you are not interested in learning how to use a tool, then this camera is not for you. Why? Here's why. The camera has these commands. An advanced lever that doubles as an on-off switch for the meter. Around the shutter button, there is a color that locks the shutter button. You have a dial, shutter speed dial, from all, with all the standard speeds from one second B to one thousandth of a second. And around it, a color, you lift a color to input the as a sensitivity of the film. This very discreet and unlabeled button here is the multiple exposure button. A hot shoe with no connection to the camera for exposure information whatsoever or flash recycling, nothing. Rewind crank, a safety here to open the camera's back. A vertical metal run shutter. And you see that these cameras are really so sturdy. If you look closely, let me put this into the light. You see that one of the blades, the shutter blades in this camera, has been mended. Yes, let me say that again. Mended. Don't ask me how, when. I just know it works perfectly. Even mended. So you see, these cameras were really made to take a lot of abuse and still work. Here, at the bottom, 
you see the provision for a motor drive, something that the Nikomat did not have. And this is the battery chamber. In terms of batteries, the camera takes two LR44 batteries, 1.5 volts, which are readily available everywhere and uh, cheap. They do not power the camera, they just power the meter. The camera does not need them to work because it relies on a mechanical shutter, just like a watch mechanism. Coming to the front of the camera, we have the self timer, we have the preview or depth of field preview lever, the bayonet release mount, the PC socket or external flash, and that's about it. So I'm very sorry if you're expecting more of the Nikon FM. There is nothing more to offer. This is a tool. But wait, this camera does have one thing that other Nikons do not have, and it's well hidden. We must remove the lens first. And if you look closely, I hope you can see, not sure. There is a button here. There is a ring that turns in the camera. This is the AI system. So when we put a lens into the camera and turn the diaphragm ring in the lens, this turns as well. So, and it forms the meter of the selected aperture bar that you have made. But there is a catch. You see this tab here? It comes out a bit. So, in order to use all the lenses, there is a button here. Just push the button and lift up this tab. And you can use lenses from the pre-AI system, like this one that was on the FT3. Still have, you still have metering, but you have to use it in stop-down mode, meaning you have to use the depth of field lever to take a reading, because there is no coupling between this lens and the meter. Now, why is this important? It is important because what's the difference between pre-AI and AI lenses, although this AIS, but it, relating to this, it is the same. You see that a pre-AI has a pretty smooth finish, so at the end, at the bottom of the lens, and the lens coupling is made through this, these rabbit ears that connect to a pin, a horrible system, I must say, it's a, it's a devil, devilish system. And Nikon, I think, also knew that it wasn't very good. And so they changed to this. So there is sort of a ridge here that couples to the ring on the outer part of the bayonet. The problem is with, with uh, pre-AI lenses, this tab here is, is there. So there is the risk of forcing the tab and so damaging this little tab and making it useless after to, you, to use with AI or AIS lenses. So it's a very good idea to take it out of the way, making this Nikon, let me show you again, the Nikon FM, fully compatible with pre-AI lenses. So you see the tab is on the up position. This does not mean that it can take any a pre-AI lens, no, especially wide angles, because they have protruding rear elements and they will mount, but the mirror will come into contact and you'll have a disaster and a very uh, painful experience and you will damage the camera. That did not happen with the FT3 because the FT3 has a mirror lockup facility, as this one hasn't, so you cannot use certain lenses, so you have to check Nikon's recommendations about this. The uh, Nikon FE, which was the electronic version of this camera, also had this system, but not the FM2, the FA. The F3 had this system and the F4, and that's it. The rest, no. Mind you, some lenses, um, pre-AI, perhaps due to wear of mounting and dismounting, and etc., do couple without touching the tab. 
So it's a question of experimenting first. And if you, if you see that it's forcing the bayonet and the tab a bit, don't, don't insist. I do have an 85 1.8 pre-AI that uh, really works a treat in any camera. It doesn't touch the tab. So I don't know, this is uh, probably due to the wear. It's a very old lens. And to end this question of lenses, you can also mount autofocus lenses into this camera, of course. So this is the AF Nikon. You don't have an AF system in the camera, so we have to focus manually, but it behaves exactly as any AI lenses or AIS, because this one that I have in the camera is AIS. So you can put any lens made by Nikon if they have the ring, I mean any lenses from AI onwards, and I'm, we are speaking about AI or AIS, because there is some confusion about Nikon e-lenses. So Nikon e-lenses are exactly like the others, except that they are made of plastic in some parts, but they are very nice. This one is the same as the 1.8 normal lens, it's the pancake version. And um, so you see, it's for the, this camera, it is perfectly, um, it's all the same to this camera, what sort of lens you put into it. It can work with any of, of the Nikkei lenses, except the digital, not digital, but those uh, developed for autofocus, the G series, without an aperture ring, which is a pain, you know. Um, so, you see that this little Nikon is capable, is very versatile, so if you, have a, if you find some old Nikon lenses, you can use them here. If you find newer Nikon lenses, you can work with them here. There is no ending, the possibilities are endless with this Nikon. Now, another good thing that the Nikon FM has is the viewfinder. So the prism is fixed, so it's not interchangeable like the F2, but it is big, it's bright, and it is fully informative. So you get shutter speed information and aperture information via uh, prism here that reflects the number onto the viewfinder. And you have three LEDs, plus, minus, and zero or O, for exposure, and that's it. Of course, you can have all the other modes, like shutter priority and aperture priority, but the camera will not do them for you. You will have to do the thinking for those modes. You will have to assess when to use a fast shutter speed. You have to assess uh, what aperture you should use in order to control your depth of field. So this camera can do everything, provided you work for it too, and don't expect the camera to do all the work for you. This is a camera that works with you, not for you. So if you're not into that sort of thing, this camera, as with all mechanical cameras, is not for you. It takes a bit of um, getting used, and for me it was a bit uh, confusing to start working with all mechanical cameras because I am from the generation of electronic cameras with aperture priority, blah, 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 blah. And so when using a mechanical camera, it was really a bit um, confusing for me because it slowed me down, of course, because I was not used to it. Now that I have dedicated some of my time with them, I really, it's no longer such a strange and a problem to use them. So it's a question of thinking. Of course, you do have to think. If you don't think about what you're doing, then you're headed for disaster. But anyway, I think it's part of life to get to know um, the basic principles of photography. And with these cameras, you will learn. Not right away, but you will have to learn. Otherwise, you will never master the camera. Because 
as I mentioned in, at the beginning of the video, this is a tool. And if you don't master the tool, you cannot use the tool. Good, my friends. So today, this is all that I have to say about the Nikon FM. It's a nice little camera. And in terms of buying one, be careful because most of these cameras were used by pros as spare bodies. So you might find a lot of them heavily used. This one, for, for instance, you have seen has a mended shutter blade. But still, they are so strongly built that they will possibly provide you with many years of reliable service. And you might get lucky and uh, find a mint example. If you find one that has a non-working meter, and if it is cheap enough, I would advise you to take it, because um, a meter here is, feels like an accessory, not an essential part of the camera. So uh, a person that uses a mechanical camera, it's a person that understands the coupling between speed, shutter speed and aperture, and depth of field preview, etc, etc. So the um, meter is almost, it's uh, just to check. So um, you can use a handheld meter, uh, even a phone's meter or another camera to do the metering if you don't feel uh, with enough confidence. But if you find one with a non-working meter, don't discard it because um, there are, are a lot of fun. I, I find mechanical cameras are for me I enjoy immensely to use it to use them without the meter because it takes us into a completely different dimension of uh, picture taking this is where we take charge of everything it's not easy and results can be a mixed bag of course but they will improve and as we shoot more and more we learn how film reacts how to evaluate and assess the light and to choose always the best aperture and speed but um, that's up to each of us to grow in the world of photography of course you can train with a digital camera if you don't feel at ease with a film one just put it in M and try to do the, the, the same it's not exactly the same but at least for the beginning you can learn a lot with a digital camera in terms of how the meter reacts in certain light situations and try to memorize what you see, the speeds, the apertures. At least this was how I learned, really. But, uh, like I say, to each its own. So it works for me, or it worked for me, but it might not work for you. And this is now definitely <laughs> what I had to say about the Nikon FM. It was a pleasure doing this video and showing you my Nikon FM truly a great little camera and I hope you had um, as much fun watching the video as I had doing it. Thank you and see you soon.